Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Plymouth Argyle Road to Glory career mode. And, guys, it felt so nice being able to get back into the studio and record yesterday's episode. I know I went on a two-week hiatus, and I, again, am sorry about that. But hopefully now I can get back to releasing episodes day in, day out, you know, giving you guys content. From what I can tell, it looks like we might have a couple new viewers. They haven't subscribed yet, which is okay. Take your time, fill us out, make sure you know that I'm going to give you a full season before you do subscribe. Um, me talking about that real quick, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. I, I want to turn this into a, a full-time thing. I want to turn this into something amazing, something good. And, and in doing so, I want to make sure that I hit on every little thing. And as you guys can tell, I went ahead and advanced to the Carve City game. I didn't want to leave you with a couple of days ahead, you know, give you a quick little intro, be like, all right, guys, see you in a minute, and then boom, Carter City. So I wanted to go ahead and get here, and while I was doing that, I didn't realize something at the time. One of our Youth Academy players actually switched positions. When it happened, I didn't realize what I was doing until after I hit accept. So Sebastian Hunter, our 17-year-old our young Englishman, he's 63 overall, grew plus four, switching him from a cam to a striker, has very, very good potential, 83 to 94 uh, potential, which is huge. I'm going to leave him into, I'm going to leave him in the U system right now until he wants to come up. He might be someone that I look at next season to train and let him get a not a starting job but maybe coming off the bench simply because as i said in yesterday's episode and i know i'm hitting on it again luke jeb caught 75 overall and because of that i i don't want to lose him to be honest with you guys i really don't when we go look at the squad hub real quick and we go check him out he's our leading scorer again even though he was out for what was it two months or sorry, joint leading score, I should say. He was out for two months, three months, something like that. Um, 20 games, he's been able to play 13 goals, four assists. He's 21 years young from Wells, and I really do not want to lose him. And if we're in the championship again, I'm going to have to loan him out. It's either loan him out or lose him and then buy him back a year or two later. And I I kind of don't want to waste that money because currently right now he's worth $9 million. Um, went up 63% apparently. So... In doing that, I might have Sebastian come in next season as a option off the bench just because when we go look at the bench, we have Robbie Robinson as our number two or number three sometimes. Sometimes it's also Dom Telford who's on the bench. We also have Frank, which I don't really know where Frank's at. Is he in the reserves? Oh, Frank's now in the reserves. I might try to loan out Frank this season. Um, I might also try to loan out Reeves and and Edwards just because they're they're older again I want to keep them on the team and let them start in a Premier League game I think that would be really cool for the channel really cool for our storyline that we were able to keep three players from the original uh, team besides Luke Jebcott and obviously Bernardo and Cooper right now um or not Bernardo sorry Cooper and Cooper Jebcott Cooper and Cooper but I think it'd be really cool to have some form of former players on the team when we do get to the Premier League, especially the older players, I feel like that would be a really cool storyline. So I, I want to keep them on as long as possible. I might try to loan them out, and I might do that in between once I get done talking and that Cardiff City game, maybe put them on the loan list. Also, speaking of the older players, I went ahead and re-signed Edwards, went ahead and re-signed Reeves. They were both running out of contract, and I did not want them to leave on a free. So I went ahead and re-signed them. And speaking of next season real quick, because I, I want to go ahead and hit on something else. Bryce Duke, he is currently 71 overall. Um, I have a very strong feeling if he does get to that 75 mark, he would be one person that would leave. And I mean, a Premier League side would definitely come into my team and take him from me, especially being 20 years old. Bryce Duke is a perfect option for a Premier League side, especially since he has, especially now that he's an exciting prospect. Or wait, is he an exciting prospect? He's, let me double check. He's something, I know that. Let me see, where are you at, Bryce Duke? Yeah, or showing great potential. He's showing great potential. So because he's showing great potential, I feel like someone would definitely come and grab him, and I would have to loan him out. He might be the one guy that I actually loan out next year that's less than 75. And in doing so, I had an idea. So 
if we were to loan him out, okay, just bear with me and think about this idea. And let me know in the in comment section down below what you think. Tanner Tesman would stay in the starting lineup. Okay, Luca Canal would then come up and be where Bryce Duke is at. So it would be Tolly, Canal, Tesman as our midfield trio with Ryan coming off the bench. And after Ryan, we really don't have another center midfielder that I feel good about besides maybe Reeves. He's 63. Um, we do have Clark, who's 58, which hopefully he goes out on loan. I can't remember if I accepted a loan move for him or not. And that's really about it. And when we go look at our youth academy, again, let me go ahead and scroll over there. There's no one really that impresses me. I mean, we have Felix, who's a 57 overall. But that's really it. Um, he's the only other center midfielder that we have. So I was thinking, what if we sign a regen player? Is there a regen player in England that would fit the team? And guys, I found it. I figured out who it would be. James Milner. When I go click on him... oh, Sorry, let me submit search. There we go. When I go click on him... He is retiring at the end of the season. He's 35 years old. He's going to be retiring. His regen will most likely be in the Premier League or the Championship. So hopefully some form of English football. If not, he might be a free agent. But I think James Milner's regen would be the perfect addition for that center midfielder whenever we get to it. Guys, just think about it for me. Let me know in the comment section down below. I don't want to do something that you guys don't want. Um... I'm just trying to think logically for the future just because before we know it, the end of the season is going to get here. And when we go look at the calendar, yeah, we have four games in today's episode. But when we end the episode, we're going to be in January, okay? Tomorrow's episode will take care of January because there's not going to be that much transfer business, to be honest with you guys. We barely have any money, so there's going to be barely any transfer business. Then we have February, March, April, and May. We have four more Four more episodes after the January. So we, we have, not including this episode, we have five episodes before the season finale. And these episodes are going to be done by, if I release an episode every single day, they're going to be done by Friday of next week. So I'm just trying to think of the future. That's one thing that I always try to do whenever I play a career mode is try to think about what's going on in the future. I'm not going to show you guys the transfer hub yet. I've been adding players. I have an idea of what I want to do, especially for the back line. However, guys, I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe put our three older players out on loan, and I'll see you in that first game. Wow, that's actually pretty exciting. 50 wins as the Plymouth Argyle manager. Hopefully we can get 50 more and end up in the Premier League. Probably not. I'm expecting us to actually be in the championship next season. I just think the hill is going to be way too hard to climb. We have Cardiff City right now in game number one of today's episode. We're in the whites. They're in the blues. Hopefully we can get three points. I'm going to push for, again, nine points like I said in yesterday's episode. We only got seven. Again, even if we did get the other two points, we would only be three points out of the top six. Maybe we can close the gap between us and Sheffield United, I'm going to say. Maybe not. Currently, Swansea City, Norwich, and Charlton Athletic might be heading down, which would be pretty interesting for Norwich side to be in League One. And if they are, I actually I might need to go scout some of their players because I might be able to get them for a really good price. And it would make sense for a championship side to go plunder a Norwich side, which ironically would be in League One. However, guys, it's us versus Cardiff. Game number one of today's episode. Let's go. Thank you. Oh, what a stop by Cooper. Cooper, can he find someone? Cooper finds Duke. Oh, and here we go. Can Cooper find someone? Cooper crosses in, and please be it going. Yes, it is. Robbie Robinson able to get the back of the net. It's 1-0 early. Oh, man, that feels good to finally get it. We've had a couple shots that with lacked power. 
That one, I think, probably had too much power. The away fans are excited. We're able to find something down this left-hand side. Cooper being an amazing left wing back. Robbie Robinson finding the right-hand side. And, guys, I think Robbie Robinson might be taking Dom Telford's spot. I'm not sure yet. I'm giving Robbie Robinson to the end of this month because it's going to put him and Dom Telford on the, about the same amount of games so we'll be able to see which one's having the better season but Robbie Robinson 12 goals he is now as we saw a minute ago he is now the team leader in goal yeah, and Bryce Duke bringing it down this left hand side Bryce Duke can he find someone crosses it in Robbie Robinson's there and Robbie Robinson's able to make the goal he took a touch. I thought maybe the goalkeeper was going to be able to stop it, and he doesn't. Robbie Robinson with a brace so far early on. The crosses have been coming in today, and it's 2-0. The goalkeeper can't believe what happened. Let's look at this replay real quick. Bryce Duke bringing it down now on seven assists. Takes a touch. Goalkeeper not really quite sure what happened. Here's a better view. Oh. Lost my headset right there. Sorry, guys. Lost the headset. It goes right between the legs of the goalkeeper. And you know what? I'll take that. All right. Totally gives it up to Duke. Duke. Can he find someone? Duke looking for Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson able to find it. Robbie Robinson is going to be one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And Robbie Robinson doesn't get it. But totally does. Our Cam, he's able to get the rebound. It's 3-0. And that should be, hopefully, three points for us in the today's first game the fans don't look impressed not sure what's going on with the with the guy right there um edwards can definitely come in for bolton totally able to get the rebound in the right place here comes duke now bryce duke can duke get himself on the score sheet he has an assist and i'm not really quite sure what just happened but bryce duke is able to get a goal and that's eight goals for eight no sorry seven goals and seven assists the home fans are not happy I'm not really quite sure a what kind of celebration that was or what happened here looks like we were just able to find the inside here that here's a better option or better look I should say we're able to find the inside oh goalkeeper not able to say it. our number 13 gets a goal and assist today he's having himself a pretty solid start to this episode and that is it for game number one. A big three points in the right direction. A 4-0 victory over Cardiff City. It took a while to get that score line, but we were able to get it. The defense for Cardiff was able to get broken down, I think, a little bit later on, which made it such a nice little, uh, I guess, score line. Robbie Robinson, two goals on the day. MVP of the match. Luke Jebcott, again, does not get a goal, so that's very interesting. I might have to bench him in the future for Dom Talfoyd. Um, however, guys, on to game number two, and I'll see you there. Before we get into game number two, I forgot we actually have a scout update coming in. So Cameron Ross, 44 to 60 overall, 15 years young, another solid goalkeeper, 240,000. I'm going to give him a little bit more time. Uh, Garrett Michaels, no. Samuel Phillips, no. And then Marcus Riley, no. I'm actually, I've actually decided when it comes to the youth system, I'm only going to sign the really good players. Either value-wise they're really good or potential they're really good. We, I think we're going to come up on a point where we have limited spots, and I don't want to get to that point where we're not able to sign so many Youth Academy, especially if we find like a, a, a banging Youth Academy scout. England, let's see if we can find anyone here. Looks like so far no. Um, Luke Stevenson... Mm, potential wise that's a no and he's been scouted for a while same thing with Jacob Hall no Isaac Heath no Leon Dale no and then Samuel Holt 425,000 he's 6'3 overall might not be the greatest potential could be something special I'm actually going to go ahead and sign this guy up let's go take a quick look at him so Samuel Holt, another striker. So as you guys can tell, we already have three solid strikers right now, which I'm fine with building up the strikers. Um, 65 pace, dribbling's solid. Five-star skill moves, agility's really good. Let's go ahead and put him on a development plan. I'm thinking 
Poacher's perfectly fine. His agility is 82, which is fine. It's more than enough, especially for a striker of his caliber. 70 acceleration is fine. I really want to get his sprint speed up. 61's not going to cut it. Shooting needs to get up. Um, reaction needs to get up. Oh, wait, sorry. Hit the wrong button. And then stamina can get up. It's going to take three weeks. Hopefully he can skyrocket through the U system and get caught up with Sebastian Hunter. I wouldn't mind, honestly, guys, rocking a couple younger youth academy players next season as backups or maybe even starting if we're in the championship to kind of get them going, um, especially if they have really good potential like that. Because as – I can't remember if I said it before or not, but our – you know, all these guys have 83 to 90 – plus potential. So if Samuel Holt can be right there with them, 83 to 94 potential or 90 potential, that would be perfect because when we go look at our strikers, we have a good chunk. Dom Talfoyd, Luke Jevcott, Robbie Robinson are our big three. Okay. Finch is a guy that has solid potential. I'm pretty sure um, Tony Wynn has good potential, Max Woodward, and Bradley Clayton all have good potential, but their overalls are not good, okay? I'm not going to talk about Lolos, because once Lolos comes back next season, I'm going to sell him. He's 60 overall at 21. He's not going to get the job done. But we have some younger strikers with really good potential. I wouldn't mind loaning out, like I said, Lou Jebka. I wouldn't mind loaning out a Dom Talford or even a Robbie Robinson next season because their potentials are not that good. You know, Luke Jevcott's potential is 75 in the game. He's reached his potential. However, because of dynamic potential, he has not. Same thing with Talfoid. Talfoid's potential in the game is 69. He's 71 overall, so he has dynamic potential. How high does it get? I'm assuming once he gets to 72, 73, that's going to be it for him this season. Um, same thing with Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, I think, has 71 potential in the game. Again, how high is he going to get? Because if, if Robbie Robinson and Telford both have 72 to 73 max potential, whereas the younger strikers I just have have 93 potential max to 83, it's no-brainer to bring in the young guys, let them play next season, and then if we get into the Premier League next year, hopefully we do, we can have a striker shootout to where we can sell a couple of these strikers and make some money and then fill the position. Just my That's just my thought process. I'm going to go ahead and answer some of these emails, rotate the side because it's about three days after our last game. The team's obviously tired, and I'll see you into game number two. All right, and on to game number two of today's episode, us versus Middlesbrough. We, uh, we actually are playing our second strongest team today. Yes, you see Bernardo. Yes, you see Cooper. But after that, the rest of the team are our backups. The squad is a little tired after the first game, or I should say the entire starting 11 is a little tired. And I have no problem playing this game with the second team. Will it make it tougher? Most definitely. Will am I risking us having or am I risking us losing three points? Most definitely. But I would rather play this team this game with the second team and then sim our third game with the with our strongest starting eleven instead of playing this game with our strongest eleven, simming the next game with our second team and losing points. I know it's different, it's interesting, but I feel good enough with the second team to get the job done. I have faith in them. Hopefully Dom Talfoyd can get a goal or two. I mean, if he can get a goal, what's, what's stopping me from putting him putting him back into the starting 11 and taking, I don't know, a Luke Jebcott off? Because Luke Jebcott has done nothing the past couple games. There's Millbrough starting 11. I'm not going to try to say all the names because I might butcher one of them, and I don't want to do that to the guy Fry those on the bench. Very interesting. I might need to look at that. And here comes Millsboro. Millsboro able to find and luckily enough Cooper is able to keep it out. I'm gonna need Cooper to have a huge day, especially with our second team starting. I mean, we have some quality pieces on the pitch. That's for sure. But the question is, can they keep up for 60 minutes? Frank, can Frank get something going? Frank takes a shot and off the. 
off the goalkeeper and it falls to Telford. I'm not really quite sure what happened. I took my eyes off the screen and we're we're up one nil. What just happened? The fans are exciting. Or the fans are ecstatic, I should say. Sorry. Look at this. We take the shot, falls perfect. Oh the FIFA cheese is on our side. Off the defender by them, and it just finds Telford. And again, Remember what I said at the start of the episode, if Telford can get some scoring, maybe he can get into the starting 11, and 19 minutes into the game, it's 1-0 because of that guy right there. And Edwards down his right-hand side, can he get to the ball? Yes, he can. Can he find someone? Looks for Ryan. Can Ryan find someone? Ryan look going one-on-one, -on -one and ah, oh, off the goal post for Ryan. I thought he was going to be able to get a, a goal right there. Able to work it around the defender. Puts it in nearly the perfect position. But it's still 1-0. And can we get something here late? And yes, we can. A minute extra of overtime. And Cameron's able to find the back of the net. It's 2-0. I just took the shot trying to see if we could get something. Cameron takes it. Defender's able to block it. Goalkeeper not able to keep up. And... Our backup, Cam, is able to get a goal right before halftime. Very, very interesting. Will Cameron currently has three goals right now in the championship. That should be half. Yes, it is. Real quick, while I have you guys here at halftime, I'm actually going to take Bernardo off. He is tired. Or actually, let me go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go ahead and get to the menus. Here we are. Stoke City's being Norwick. I'm going to go ahead and take Bernardo off. He is tired. I'm going to move Tucker actually over to Bernardo's spot. We're going to bring Watkins in. And I feel better now that we're up two goals to be able to keep this two-goal lead. But we'll find out. And here comes Millsborough. Millsborough trying to get a go quick goal. Cooper able to make the stop. Again, they don't put any pressure on the shot. And it's an easy save for our goalkeeper. But... Oh. Horrible pass by Edwards. Look at this. They bring it back down. They take the shot, and uh, luckily enough, it's too far to the left. Let me see. Did Cooper? Yep, Cooper did not get a hand on it. Too far to the left. Still 2-0. Oh, and here they come. They're trying to get one back. Cooper. Super Cooper with the save. He has had a pretty easy day, to be honest with you guys. I mean, two shots. Besides that, no power. Luckily enough, we've had two shots, but they've been able to uh, find the back of the net. Edwards goes up to Ryan now. Ryan bringing it down. Can Ryan find someone? Look at this. Cameron making the run. Cameron, he makes the run. We take the shot. And Cameron showing up today. 3-0 Plymouth over Millsboro. And Cameron with a brace. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Cameron's probably the one player on the team that has no potential whatsoever. If you, uh, if you go back and remember. Or go back and watch the tape. He has no potential. His overall is his potential. But hopefully, hopefully we can increase it a little bit with this season. That's what I'm hoping. And that is it, guys, for game number two. Plymouth three, Middlesbrough zero. Two huge road games. Two huge wins on the road. Currently, guys, the team is in great form. Will Cameron, four attempts, two goals. Middlesbrough not able to get around our defense. Luckily enough, I mean, they had some shots on target. Not really quite sure what that was, but that's it for game number two, guys. I will see you in the quick sim for game number three and then on the derby. All right, guys, as we get ready for game number three, Coventry City's a little tired because of all the fixture congestion that's going on. We are not. I was able to rotate the side. The starting 11 is perfectly fine. I'm not going to put any of the younger guys in, this, in the starting 11 just because we have derby in a couple of days. I have a feeling Derby's going through the exact same thing that we're going through and that Coventry's going through, and I feel like they might be a little tired too, and we might have to rotate slightly for that game. However, Plymouth versus Coventry, I'm going to quick sim this. Let's see. It is a – I'm sorry, what? It's a 3-1 loss. Wow. Who got our who got our one goal? Luke Jebcott. Well, at least Luke got back on the board. And he got sent off. That explains it. 
And it looks like the in-game manager did not do anything to rotate. So it looks like we were working with one striker the whole time. Huh. As we get ready for the third round of the FA Cup, we welcome in Derby County and two home park. I'm pretty sure we're the home team. Maybe they're the home team. And we are the team that's coming into them. Anyway, guys, as I try to figure that out, I um, I checked for the game. Derby County's not tired. So they're not exhausted as I thought it was compared to our boys. They're a little exhausted. As you saw because of the last game, um, Luke Jebcott is not playing. He is out right now with the suspension. Tom Talfoyd comes in. There's Derby County. They are set. I just realized I forgot to scout Norwich players. I'll do that after this game. However, game number four of today's episode, let's go in. Let's beat Derby County, and let's get on to the next round of the FA Cup. Oh, and look at this pass in. Telfoid able to get it. Telfoid takes a shot. Telfoid. Dom Telfoid is able to get us the one goal lead that we need 26 minutes into the FA Cup. Watch this replay. Fights off the defender. Gets past him. Finds the bottom right corner. Telfoid, that could be the goal that sends us into round number four, or maybe it's round 32. Of anyway, of the next round of the FA Cup, Roos cannot believe it, and Derby. That's why you're at the bottom of the table and we're up top. Oh, and look at this now. We're able to get right through the defense. Talfoy, can he make it too? Uh, and Roos is able to keep it out of the back of the net. Oh, and Derby, Derby able to get around our defense. They're still moving the ball around. One too many passes, I think, they had. Yes, it is. Still 1-0, but we're not out of danger yet. We get to Bryce Duke. Duke, can he find someone? Does a little fancy footwork. Gives it to Talfoy. Talfoy is able to find Tolly. Tolly is able to find Tesman. Tesman running full speed on his right-hand side. Can Tesman find the back of the net? No, he cannot. Roos is playing on his head right now. And here comes Derby now. Derby County trying to get Derby County. Can they get something? Cooper able to make the stop. And ball bounces around. Cooper's able to make the stop again. They're going to be able to... He doesn't go after it. Very interesting. Evans, or I think that's Evans. I'm not sure. Oh, what a stop. Corner. Oh, it's a corner. Okay, that's why. So corner kick for Derby. Real quick, we're actually making a triple substitution. As you can tell, we're replacing that entire right-hand side. Luke Bolton's tired. Robbie Robinson's tired. And uh, Tanner Tesman. Sorry, I couldn't remember the guy's name. Tanner Tesman's tired, too. Making a triple substitution. Hopefully, we can get something going down this right-hand side. Here comes Talfoyd. Talfoyd, can he get something? Talfoyd, not in the position he should be. Low cross in. And... We find the ball again, and amazing stop by the goalkeeper. And here comes Tolly. Tolly, can he find someone? He finds Telfoid. Telfoid, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Can he find it? And the goalkeeper is able to make another save. Oh, I don't know what I have to do to get it around this goalkeeper. I don't even remember how I scored the first goal, to be honest with you. Bird for Derby coming off. Not really quite sure who's coming in. Can we maybe get a second goal here? We cross it in and off the goalkeeper. And we get it in. Frank is able to get the second goal of the game. Another bounce around. And it's 2-0 Plymouth over Derby County. And hopefully that leads us to the victory. Uh, I'm not really quite sure what happened here. We cross it in off the goalkeeper. Frank off a crazy angle, like I, you can say. Able to just get it in there as the goalkeeper watches it happen. Frank with the goal and seems like probably forever. 2-0, a fitting time too for him. And uh, hopefully that's a victory. Frank gets it to Talfoyd. Telford finds Frank. Frank takes the shot, and Frank is able to get a brace and a consolation goal for us, I think. 3 deal. Their goalkeeper has been absolutely phenomenal today, but Frank is able to get the upper hand this time, and we definitely, 
for certain should be getting the victory in round number three of the FA Cup. And here comes Derby. Derby one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Evans able to take the shot and off the crossbar. And that's just been, takes another shot. That's just been their game right now. Marriott not able to get anything. Derby County not really to get anything. It's it's 4 nil, Or sorry, 4 nil, 3 nil. Oh, and I shouldn't have took that shot. And another over the crossbar type of shot. Let's see if maybe I can be smarter this time. 89 minutes into the game. I think that's going to be it for today's game at number four. Um, if anything does happen, I'll let you guys know. However, I will see you guys in the menus to finish up the episode. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. I wanted to go ahead and advance to the mill wall just in case if a development happened or if we had a transfer offer, I could show you what's what's going on. The only thing that I can say that has happened is we currently have loaned out Ben Reeves um, on a two-year loan. So that's the only thing that's really gone out. I mean, we've had a couple other loan moves that's happened, but we accepted those way way back in the first half of the season. Nothing really has gone on besides just loaning players out. Hopefully they can grow. Again, guys, please join me for tomorrow's episode. It's the January transfer window episode. Not really quite sure if anything exciting will happen. We currently have four games. Um, I'm expecting an FA Cup game to happen later on this month. I'm guessing there's some replays going on. Uh, also, in tomorrow's episode... I'll go over the transfer hub, what players we're br looking to bring in next season, what players we could be potentially letting go next season. Again, guys, that is it for today's episode. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys then. Deuces.